Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, what we're going to be talking about specifically is an introduction to absolute zero and pressure. So follow along in your notes, and if you have any questions, make sure that you ask tomorrow. So to start with, what is absolute zero? I'm going to rephrase kind of the question that led us to absolute zero, but the main question was, can kinetic energy ever become so low that all atomic motion and vibration stops completely? And so in case you forgot what kinetic energy is a reference to, kinetic energy is just energy of motion. So we're not just talking about um, atoms, we're talking about their parts. So think about a solid like ice. Um, it, even though it's not moving at all from our perspective, if you were to zoom in on the atoms, it is vibrating and moving still, even though it is frozen. Okay. Now, a scientist in about 1848 named Lord Kelvin calculated the temperature hypothetically at which all motion and vibration would stop. And he looks like this. He looks like anybody else from the 1800s. He had a nice little white beard going in the 1800s like everybody else. So what did he call this point? He called this hypothetical point absolute zero. And in case you've ever wondered where the term absolute zero comes from, it is the point at which a substance would have zero kinetic energy. And so that's where the term comes from. Now, we've gotten very close. And so we've gotten within, actually at this point, 500 nano degrees of absolute zero, but we've never quite reached it. And actually, we never will. And that's for a whole different topic. So when we talk about energy and the laws of thermodynamics, we'll talk about why. But um, we've gotten very close to absolute zero, but we've never quite hit it. Okay, so what else do we need to know? The Kelvin temperature scale and the unit itself, Kelvin, was named after Lord Kelvin. And so um, absolute zero is set on the Kelvin scale as the lowest temperature that is humanly possible, okay? And so what that means is that there are no negative temperatures on the Kelvin temperature scale. So just take a look at this visual. We've got at the very bottom uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And so you can see that zero K is equal to negative 273 degrees Celsius or negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, keep in mind that whenever we do gas law calculations, it is often mandatory that we use this Kelvin unit of measurement. So if we use Celsius, it won't work, okay? If we use Fahrenheit, it definitely won't work. But there are particular reasons why, which we'll talk about when the time is right, okay? So I guess what I'm trying to say is the most important thing to get out of this little introduction is how do you convert from Celsius to Kelvin and back and forth. So the nice thing is, it's simple. To get from Celsius to Kelvin, you merely add 273 degrees. Okay, and so here's our formula if you want to think of it that way. So notice on that same scale, so water freezes, it says on these thermometers, at zero degrees Celsius or 273K. How did we get that? Zero plus 273, is 273, okay? Look at water boiling, 100 degrees Celsius, we add 273, that's 373K. So let's take a look at two simple examples. Human body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. I wanna convert that to Kelvin. All I've gotta do, add 273 degrees, okay? So by adding 273, I get 310K. What about room temperature? going the opposite direction. So if I say room temperature is 298K, what is that in Celsius? All I've got to do is subtract 273 to get to Celsius, okay? So think about it logically. Celsius is going to be a very low number always, okay? And Kelvin is always going to be higher than it. So if I want to get to Kelvin, I add 273. If I want to get to Celsius, I, it's going to be lower. So I'm going to subtract 273. All right, last bit, pressure. So this isn't a physics class, so pressure, the definition itself, isn't really that important. But pressure, which we're going to abbreviate as capital letter P, is a force acting on a unit of area. So picture a room that you're currently in with lots of gas molecules just bouncing around everywhere. So what we're feeling is pressure at that, of all the gas molecules hitting us. So how does that exactly work? Well, there's an area in our room, the ceiling, the floor, the walls. There is an area of our body, okay? And gas molecules are hitting 
are and creating a force, generating a force on a unit of area, in our case, the room or our bodies, okay? Now, how is this force created? Again, it is literally gas molecules that are bouncing against the inside of a container, like a room. Now, there are many, many, many different units of pressure, okay? And we're going to have to convert between them pretty easily. So here gives us all of the major conversions that we would ever need to convert between our units of pressure. So we've got one atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 tor, or 101.3 kilopascals, okay? Those are all very, very common units of pressure. And so where it says translation, what are we talking about? ATM, I just told you, it stands for atmospheres, okay? And we'll talk about what that means in a bit. Millimeters of mercury, okay? Millimeters of mercury, HG, remember that's mercury. Tor doesn't really have a fancy abbreviation, it's just Tor. It's named after Torcelli, who is a famous Italian scientist. And then KPA is the official kind of unit that we like to use in most of science, but hardly anybody ever actually ever does use it. KPA stands for kilopascals. Pascal, again, being a great mathematician and physicist. And so that's technically what these stand for. All right, now what do these units mean? So let's picture a tube of mercury, like you see in the upper picture there, at sea level. Uh, it will actually be lifted up slightly. And so um, if we are looking at the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level, that's what an atmosphere represents. So one atmosphere is the pressure of all of the gas of everything above us pushing down on us. That is one atmosphere. Now, millimeters of mercury is just if you had a column of mercury at sea level, how many millimeters of mercury that column would rise up at sea level. And so it just so happens to be 760 millimeters worth, okay? Tor is another name for millimeters of mercury, but it's, again, named after a different scientist here, so Torricelli. And then KPA, like I said, this is kind of sad, is the official SI unit for pressure, but no one really ever uses KPA, okay? So we'll use it, but no one else really ever gets a chance to really make it shine, let's say. So how do we do this? The nice thing is simple conversions. So draw out those conversion boxes. They're nice and easy. One step. Okay, we're not talking about moles anymore. So just one step is all we need. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's say I wanted to convert 7.500 atmospheres to millimeters of mercury. Just like before, I put what I know in the upper left and I need a conversion factor. So I gave you the conversion factors. All of them are equal to each other. So I want to go from, mil, uh, from atmosphere, sorry, to millimeters of mercury. So remember, one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Why did I set up my conversion factor that way? Because I want my atmospheres to cancel. And then notice I'm left with the unit millimeters of mercury. Okay? When I do that out, plug it into your calculator, you get 5,700 millimeters of mercury. And that would be my answer. Let's try a second example here. 560 millimeters of mercury to KPA. So in the corner, I write what I know. 560 millimeters of mercury. And I need a conversion factor to go from millimeters of mercury to KPA. So look back at your conversions there, your equals. Everything is equal. So if I have 760 millimeters of mercury, that's equal to 101.3 KPA. So when I do my math out, notice my millimeters of mercury unit cancel away and plug that into your calculator, you get 75 kPa. So are you going to need to memorize our conversion factors? Yes, you are. You're going to have to know all of those conversion factors. So one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury equals 760 tor equals 101.3 kPa, okay? So just keep that in mind. We'll do one more just as an example, and then try to do four, five, and six on your own and see how you do. We'll go over those ones tomorrow.